Welcome to Encounter the Word. We at the Jesuit Institute offer this reflection every Sunday on the liturgy of the Word, where we try to make sure that our reflection on God's Word helps us live God's Word in our daily lives. And so, let's pray together. Lord God, we give you thanks that we can gather as a community to reflect upon your word and how your word invites us to respond at this moment in our lives and the life of our community and our society. Help us through our listening to deepen our ability to hear what you want of us so that we might live this word in practical ways in the days that are to come. We ask this in the name of Jesus the Lord. Amen. Amen. Reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In these days, when the disciples were increasing in number, the Hellenists murmured against the Hebrews because their widows were neglected in the daily distribution. And the twelve summoned the body of disciples and said, It's not right that we should give up preaching the word in order to serve tables. Therefore, brethren, pick out from among you seven men of good repute, full of the Spirit and of wisdom, who we may appoint to do this duty. But we will devote ourselves to prayer and to ministry of the word. But what they said pleased the whole multitude, and they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Spirit, and Philip the Procurus, and Nicanor, and Timon, and Parmenas, and Nicolaus, a proselyte of Antioch. These they set before the apostles, and they prayed and laid their hands upon them. And the word of God increased, and the number of disciples multiplied greatly in Jerusalem. And a great many of the priests were obedient to the faith. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May your merciful love be upon us as we hope in you, O Lord. May May your merciful merciful love love be upon us as we hope in you, O Lord. Bring out your joy to the Lord, O you just. For praise is fitting for the upright. Give thanks to the Lord upon the harp. With a ten-string lute, sing him songs. May your merciful love be upon us as we hope in you, O Lord. For the word of the Lord is faithful and all his works to be trusted. The Lord loves justice and right and his merciful love fills the earth. May your merciful love be upon us, as we hope in you, O Lord. Yes, the Lord's eyes are on those who fear him, who hope in his merciful love, to rescue their souls from death, to keep them alive in famine. May your merciful love be upon us, as we hope in you, O Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Come to the Lord, to that living stone, rejected by people, but in God's sight chosen and precious. And like living stones, be yourselves built into a spiritual house, to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in Scripture, Behold, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and he who believes in him will not be put to shame. To you, therefore, who believe, he is precious, but for those who do not believe, the very stone which the builders rejected had become the cornerstone, and a stone that will make men stumble, a rock that will make them fall. For they stumble because they disobey the word, as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, 
a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, that you may declare the wonderful deeds of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. I am the way and the truth and the life, says the Lord. No one comes to the Father but through me. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. In those days, Jesus said to his disciples, Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And when I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, that where I am, you may be also. And you know the way where I am going. And Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. If you had known me, you would have known my Father also. Henceforth, you know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and we shall be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you so long, and yet you do not know me, Philip? He who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or else believe me for the sake of the works themselves. Truly, truly, I say to you, he who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and greater works than these will he do, because I go to the Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. For many people, going home means a return to a familiar and safe place, where there is some physical and emotional security. It's a place where we feel anchored, It may not always be a physical space, and yet it's a place where one can be yourself. It is normally at home where we feel unafraid, where there is a buffer against the harsh realities of the world. In today's gospel, Jesus evokes the image of home. He tells his disciples that their hearts should not be troubled as he is preparing a place for them. I wonder what that means for us as we live in a time of uncertainty and confusion, as we face a declining economic situation, longer and longer power cuts. Maybe we, like the disciples, feel and ask, Lord, how can we know the way? Lord, show us the Father. Right now, many of us are finding it hard to see the way forward. We yearn for truth from leaders for stability and a sense of direction. Many are wondering where God is in the mess. The account we hear in the Acts of the Apostles ponders the same questions. A great scandal has occurred in the early church. Favoritism, nepotism, discrimination. The in-group, the Hebrews, have profited at the expense of everyone else. Not too far from what we experience in South Africa today. The Hebrews looked after themselves first at the expense of the poor Hellenist widows. 
injustice and scandal developed in the early church. And this caused some to be excluded. This caused uncertainty and confusion in the Christian community. It was no longer a home for everyone. But notice what they do. They come together and make the necessary changes to meet the needs of their time, to ensure that everyone has their place, has their home. They listen. They think beyond themselves and their own interests. Notice, too, how the whole community is involved, the whole household of the church, in finding the way forward. The account ends telling us how things went well for them. And the way that the early church follows is the way of Jesus himself, the way of justice and development, of community building, ensuring that all are taken care of and have a home. They are not afraid of change. They want all to have a place. And Jesus invites us to ensure that all have a place. I wonder if on this fifth Sunday of Easter, the Lord is reminding and inviting us to remember our own Christian prophetic tradition, our calling to keep working for the reign of God's kingdom. Sometimes the dark forces around us seem to have the upper hand. Is the Lord inviting us to anchor ourselves in Him again so that we look out and examine the world around us from that vantage point? Maybe there are three invitations for us. First, the invitation to come together. Are we, God's church, able to come together as the early community did to meet the needs of God's people in our own times? Are we willing to talk about what changes we need to make in order to ensure that justice and development and the building of a community so that all have a home is done amongst us? This will come at a cost, a cost to us personally, but also as a community. Yet Jesus, the way, invites us to ponder what we don't like to ponder, our often tilted politics, the homelessness, those living in the scandal and squalor of informal settlements, immigrants, children who are educated in the most appalling conditions, gender-based violence and abuse. All this because some are profiting at the expense of others. Can we talk about that? Then there's the invitation to think beyond our box, to think God's way, not our way. Jesus, identified as the way, invites us to a new way of thinking, points us beyond our box to the truth we conveniently shy away from or try to reason or argue away. And we cannot. Jesus, the way, points us to a new horizon, to share his vision, to labor to make that a reality. And the danger is in our current situation, we can either do as others do or at worst give up laboring for the coming of God's kingdom. And thirdly, the invitation to check in with ourselves. Lord, show us the Father, Philip says. Have I been with you for so long and yet you do not know me, Philip? Jesus asks. To have seen me is to have seen the Father. Jesus says that when we see him, we see the Father. But maybe like the disciples, we have been around Jesus for a long time as believers and yet have not really seen him and his vision. Like those disciples, we can get so wrapped up in our own ideas of God and how God should work or doesn't work that we do not see the way, the truth, and the life. And because we do not see, our unjust world traps us and prevents us from helping others find a home. Our limited vision births unjust structures and practices, exclusion of some, discrimination, favoritism, and inability to listen and to build the community that Jesus envisions and desires. And then we wonder why our hearts are troubled, and maybe even cry out like Philip, Lord, show us the Father. 
Jesus invites us to prepare a place for everyone, to ensure that everyone has a home. It's an invitation to recommit ourselves to stand up and to be counted. We do indeed know the way. The world we live in gives us an opportunity to choose that way. The question is, do we have the courage to choose the way? The way who is the only home for every human being. Can we take up that invitation of Jesus? Let's join in praying together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and, and the glory are yours, now, now and, and forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Let's pray, friends. Lord, we give you thanks that we could encounter your word, that we could reflect upon your word, and help us now to deepen our reflections as we try to live out the invitation that you have for each one of us. And in so doing, become your faithful disciples. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us, and we hope to have you reflecting with us again next week.